for the final session of our second Net Zero session, we are joined by Daniel Wills, who is project manager at Vattenfall. And he's worked for Vattenfall for about nine years, so best part of a decade. Uh, based in South Wales, has predominantly been working on uh, onshore projects and hybrid schemes in Wales and Scotland. And Scotland is a scientist postgraduate. So, um, Daniel, I'm going to hand over to you and um, just to give people a little bit of a warning. You have got some, uh, you have got some interactive points during your presentation. So we are expecting people to be active in the chat. Is that right? That's right. Yes, please. <laughs> yeah, thanks very much, Melanie. Um, hi, yes. Yeah, so, yeah, my name is uh, my name is Daniel Wills. Um, and I have been working for Vattenfall for nine years. Um, my career path is slightly different, perhaps, to some of the other speakers you've had today. So many of them are uh, graduates who've gone through the, the graduate scheme route. Um, whilst I am a graduate and I have tried and I did uh, try immediately to get into the industry, uh, it took a number of years to finally get into this uh, industry itself. Um, and I did that by um, being uh, an entry level, working on an entry level job and then working my way through the system. So hopefully I'll be able to talk to you a little bit about my experiences about Vattenfall and how Vattenfall enables um, that sort of career path, um, as well as some of the more common graduate schemes and, um, and apprentices and things like that. So uh, if we can go to the next slide, please. So just a little bit about Vattenfall for those that aren't familiar. Um, we're 100% we're Swedish state owned, um, established in 1909 with some large scale hydropower. Uh, we now work across many sectors in electricity, heat, uh, gas and energy services and a number of core countries as well, including the UK, Sweden, Germany, Netherlands and Denmark. Um, we have about 20,000 employees, uh, 350 in the UK and that is continuing to grow. And so far to date, we've invested about three and a half billion pounds in the UK energy system. And we have a number of offices located uh, throughout the UK uh, with our main offices, offices you see there. Uh, we have one gigawatt of wind in operation, uh, both onshore and offshore. And we very recently have launched district heating uh, and grid network businesses. Um, one of the, the strengths of Vattenfall is, is our ability to uh, take on a number of different technologies and co-locate those in the same area so that we're able to, to really maximize the benefits and maximize what can often be quite a constrained grid network. So we see that as a real strength of Vattenfall. Um, we're also a gold award uh, for the commitment to, to equality, um, for diversity. And um, we've signed up to the uh, Armed Forces Covenant as well, which is a, a public declaration that we've done there. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, so this is the this is the interactive session. I'm very conscious that I've got the graveyard graveyard shift, and not everybody might necessarily want to hear me talk monologue for the entire time. So what I'll do is I'll just go through four or five questions, and if you just want to feel free to have a have a stab at a guess, uh, what you think the answer is, the multiple choice, you can't go too wildly wrong. Um, I'll give you a few seconds to do that, and then um, the ultimate prize is a big pat on the back for yourself if you if you get get them all right. So um, well done in advance for that. So if we can have the first question, please. So the UK has the tightest labour market in 5, 10, 25 or 40 years. Yeah, do put your uh, answers in the, the chat box so we can uh, get a sense of, uh, of what people are thinking. OK, 25, 40, 10. Oh, I've got a mix. 40 is winning at the moment. A couple for 25. I feel like I should be running a tote at the, um, at the races. <laughs> yeah. Okay, okay, if you know the answer, please. So 40 years uh, there's the is the current tightest tightest labour market. So um, you know obviously this is a this is a concern in terms of uh, growing economy, you know, how the pace you can you can grow the low carbon economy if there's such a uh, shortage of labour available. Uh, if we can do the second question, please. So the shortfall of engineering graduates every year, so particularly relevant to some of the sessions we had earlier. So what do people think their answers are here? Hmm. 
getting some quite varied answers. So yeah, if you can reveal the answer, please. So yeah, 20,000 uh, as of 2019. Um, so I provided references to all these points. So if you have any comeback on any of them, please take it up with the publishing authority, not myself. Um, so 20,000. So again, this is a real concern for our sector where we have quite a large demand for engineers. Uh, again, uh, this, this, uh, this typically will, will slow down the ability for the industry to, to move forward at pace. Uh, if we can have the third question, please. So the percent of professional engineers that are women in the industry. Okay, thanks very much. If we can have some answers, please. So yeah, just 12%. So I mean, that's a particularly, um, particularly low number. I mean, I have, I have a daughter myself, and I'd love for her to get into engineering uh, when she's a little bit older. So we just started school, so she probably wouldn't be very good at the moment. But um, yeah, that's, I mean, that's a concerning number. I mean, there's, um, I think, the number of actual entrants that go into university to do engineering is around one in five, so around 20%. Yet over 50% of graduates are, are women themselves. So there's clearly a disparity there between the number of engineers and the number of women um, taking that forward. So I think that's something that certainly needs to improve industry-wide. And I think uh, in Vattenfall, we have, a, we have a higher number than that 12%. And um, it's part of our core values to ensure diversity across many different uh, areas. But um, gender is certainly one of them as well. Our next question. The percentage of energy and utility workforce that will retire within 10 years? Any answers, please? Yeah. Again, quite, quite varied, which is interesting. So yeah, if we can have the answer, please. So yeah, 20%, which represents 220,000 uh, new recruits that will be needed. So um, there are clearly clearly jobs out there um, that will need to be filled. Um, I think the important thing, and I think one of the things Fountainfall does really, really, really well, and I'll touch upon it a bit more later, is what there is, is a clear pathway for your development within the organisation. So whilst there are some of these more senior members of, of the Fountainfall family retiring, um, you know, there's a, a pipeline coming through of, of good, innovative graduates so and, um, and young stars in general. So we can go to the next slide, please. So uh, this is really Vattenfall's key message. And our ambition is fossil free living within one generation. Um, so effectively, we want to see renewables um, become the um, dominant energy player within the sector. But this also means across all other aspects and we want to see carbon neutrality. So whether that's in the concrete industry, whether that's in steel, for example, that, that all applies. Um, Vattenfall is, is a partner on a, a hybrid um, initiative whereby we're looking at carbon neutral, uh, sorry, low carbon steel making, um, which is traditionally one of the, the higher um, carbon producing industries because of the heat required um, within the process. So fossil free living is really at the core of what Vattenfall looks to do. Uh, if we can go next slide, please. Yeah, so I mean, you're perf this is the perfect time if you're interested in getting in renewable, getting into renewable energy. Um, you really have hit perfect time for that. So global demand uh, for low carbon energy is increasing um, with electrification of industry, homes, business, transport. I think the demand is going to potentially exponentially increase. So it's going to be a real need to, uh, for more renewable projects coming online. Um, offshore wind is becoming more and more financially competitive and it's got the real benefit of large scale, really, really large scale. And, and onshore wind is, is already the cheapest form of new electricity. And since I've been working for Battlefall, you know, the, the levelized cost of energy, so the actual cost for each megawatt um, hour of power um, is almost halved. Um, it's actually more than halved, sorry. So that's, that's real, real progress in a fairly short, short amount of time. Um, and then there's large predicted growth in generating capacity. So Vattenfall is just one of many players looking to develop renewables uh, in the electricity system. So um, I think the more renewables we bring online, the better. So what does this mean for everybody? Uh, 
with just more and more local jobs, more and more low carbon jobs, and um, and hopefully uh, there's a perfect storm for any that want to apply. Uh, next slide, please. So this is a um, this is just a fairly indicative uh, project timeline for a large scale onshore wind farm. It would look very similar for a, for a large scale um, offshore wind farm. Um, and you can clearly see that the, the majority of the FTEs, the majority of the employment tends to occur during the shortest phase during construction. And that also coincides with the cash flow for a project. Um, so for me, for Valenfall as a client, we don't actually have uh, huge numbers of FTEs per project. Uh, what we tend to do is whilst we have all of our engineers in house working in the background, they'll tend to be spread across a number of projects. And then what we look to do is to tap into the supply chain uh, in order to fulfill a lot of that, uh, a lot of the work that goes on. Um, and when I say the supply chain, you've got your tier one contractors who are the large balancer plant uh, turbine suppliers, et cetera. And then there'll be a lots of different tiers below those um, that fulfill the supply chain itself. And Vanfall really, really looks to map that, that uh, supply chain to see exactly um, where there's a shortage of skills within those areas and then also looks to maximize local employment. So there are various activities that you could potentially get into and, and still contribute to a, to a renewable project. And, and some of those activities have, have been listed below. Um, it's by no means an exhaustive list. So yeah, lots of variation there, lots of different challenges. And next slide, please. So yeah, this is the UK Vattenfall Skills and Talent Framework. So this is uh, this is how we look at people getting into their climate smarter careers, as we like to call it. And this is how we like to grow and engage our workforce, but also perhaps in some ways more importantly, retain and nurture that talent as well. So there's no use having a huge turnover um, if you have to retrain people coming in. And if we think that this gateway, this series of gateways um, enables for the, for the best setup. So. Uh, I'll just very quickly run through the gateways. So you have gateway one, which really is just the early stage education. So we do a lot of uh, educational programs with primary schools, secondary schools, um, really trying to teach them about how the renewable sector works. Um, and we're just trying to just trying to educate as best as we can. Um, we tend to find they're often the most receptive and willing to learn as well, which is great. Um, gateway two, we have the more formal work experience and the internships, for example, and there's an example there of the, the Ogden Trust internship, which is a four week summer placement. Uh, gateway three is for the higher education, and further education, and um, whether that's a year in industry or international training programs, that's all covered in this particular gateway. And I have an example from a colleague of mine who underwent the, the graduate training program, and he's still with that and today in, in, a, in a department that he really, really thrives in. I really, really enjoys. And I know that in the earlier sessions, we also had one of our graduates, Angus, on as well. Um, and in Gateway 4, we have apprenticeships. So you can have the um, the general apprenticeships, which which we use the in England, for example, the levy to, to secure and fund, and, and that has its benefits. But also, from my side, more importantly, we have project-funded apprenticeship schemes. So if we can get out there and deliver more projects, we can potentially deliver more project-specific apprenticeships. And I'll talk about an example of Fenikimoid Wind Farm, uh, some apprenticeships we did there in a minute. And then Gateway 5 is transition training. So in the example there, armed forces often just need some upskilling in order to enter the sector. So we look to do that there. And then lastly, Gateway 6 is really about internal development. So when you become part of the Vattenfall family, there's uh, lots and lots of training opportunities, a training catalogue, and then um, various uh, cross-continent training programs that you can undertake in order to grow uh, and become a better asset to Vattenfall itself. Uh, so next slide, please. So this, this is the, yeah, this is the Penicamoid apprenticeship example I just mentioned. So um, very briefly, Penicamoid is a 76 turbine wind farm in South Wales, uh, largest wind farm in England and Wales. Uh, we used the project funding from that to secure 13 apprentices. Uh, nine of those were the tier one suppliers, so with the balancer plant and tier one suppliers, for example. And then we, as part of Vattenfall, um, took on four local apprentices, which we trained specifically to be wind turbine technicians in 2013 to 2015. Um, and that was this was a very bespoke course. There wasn't a lot of, around at the time in, in Wales for this sort of scheme. So we almost created the apprenticeship ourselves. 
and that involved uh, local college studies in the first year, um, more of a hands-on um, college approach in Tandrillo in North Wales for the second year, and then some actual work experience in one of our offshore wind farms uh, in Kent, uh, Kentish Flats Wind Farm in the third year. Uh, and now we have so from those four employees, sorry, from those four apprenticeships, three of them are currently still with Vattenfall. Uh, and Michael's story is a, is a really nice one in the sense that he he came into the role, he came into the apprenticeship, sorry, uh, as a 28 year old. So he, he limited himself, he had few skills. Um, he wanted to really, really improve himself uh, for his family, somewhere local as well. And now he's uh, he's still working as a turbine technician at Penic and Moyth, and he's also won the apprenticeship of the year award in 2015. So he's a real, real nice story that we that we like to sing about as often as we can. Uh, next slide, please. So yeah, as well as um, project-specific apprenticeships, we also offer internal apprenticeships whereby we access, for example, the England levy to do so. Um, one of our managers, John O'Sullivan, undertook a master's in business administration whilst also working. Um, and the beauty of that was that the, the apprenticeship allowed him to apply some of those learnings into his day-to-day -day role. So it was not only good for him in his uh, career progression, but also had benefit to, to Battenfall, um, who were ultimately the ones who secured the apprenticeship for him. So I won't read his quote out, but uh, yeah, clear to, clearly um, something that, that John benefited from significantly. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so uh, graduates, I know a lot of you on the on the conference are graduates. This is perhaps quite relevant. Um, I mentioned the supply chain and the fact that a lot of the uh, full time equivalents from a project are graduate. Uh, sorry, are with a supply chain. And this is an example of a, a South Kyle wind farm project. We're currently in construction in Scotland and our balance of plant contractor, RJ McLeod's employed two graduates uh, on that job. So they're very much taking the skills that they've learned and applying it very directly on a wind farm now. Um, so it's really, really great to see. Uh, they're both um, very different roles. So one of them undertake, is undertaking environmental survey work, which is an incredible, uh, incredibly detailed part of, of any onshore wind project. And then the other is a quantity surveyor working for Arjun McLeod's um, on some of the more construction specific elements of the project. So, yeah, some really nice positive story there. But without rolling out these sorts of projects and without investment in onshore wind, these, these two graduates may not have come to fruition. So um, the real importance on projects here. Next slide, please. Uh, I mentioned uh, one of the gateways, the uh, Graduate International Training Program. So um, with this particular program, uh, the graduates are offered offer the opportunity to experience various parts of the business, to almost dip their toe into various departments to see what, what they really liked. Um, it also meant that they could do a lot of travel and see different parts of the business uh, face to face and first hand. And Tom O'Reilly, um, who completed that graduation post, I think it was about four years ago, um, is now working as a transaction manager in Vattenfall. And uh, one of the main takeaways from his quote that I'd like to, to note really is that the positivity around that training course has meant that there's been a high retainment of those graduates as well within Vattenfall. So obviously they see the merit of uh, what they've learned and then also continuing to, to apply their training in Vattenfall also. Uh, next slide, please. Um, yeah, and for me, this is just something I wanted to highlight really as well. I mean, I take great pride in what I do in delivering um, renewable energy projects and really making sure the energy sector moves to low carbon. Um, beyond the obvious of supplying low carbon electricity um, to the network, but also to transport, for example, is the community benefits. So often what you find is these onshore wind farm schemes are in rural areas, um, often in fairly poor areas sometimes. Um, some of the areas are also of low ecological value. So by providing these community benefits services, you're really able to, to benefit those local to the wind farm uh, and they can start to take some pride in, in what they have on their doorstep. Um, so to date, Banfall on an annual basis gives out two and a half million pounds in community benefit funding. Um, we take a paced and community led approach to that funding. So we let the community steer how they want that money spent. Um, for example, for Penicamoy, we've established a community interest company that represents the uh, the needs of the community and is a, is a bit more arm's length from Vattenfall. Um, and on Vattenfall, uh, sorry, on the Penicamoy scheme, we've given away over, not given away, sorry, we funded over, over £5 million uh, 
um, in the last five years um, to various parts of the community in terms of health, well-being, jobs, facilities, etc. And also over half a million pound of that was spent on COVID recovery. So it was able to react really, really quickly and deliver huge benefits in what is a what was a very trying time. Um, so yeah, just something to be proud of there. Our next slide, please. <clears throat> Sorry. So yeah, so jobs for the future. Um, so jobs for the future in terms of VAT and full employment. Um, we've talked a lot about engineering today. Um, but as you can see in that list, again, not exhaustive, there are all sorts of different roles that you could apply for in Vattenfall. And I provided a link there to where you can see um, currently advertised jobs. Um, so the project managers like myself, but also contract package managers, um, environmental managers, commercial managers, lawyers, all sorts of things um, that really should appeal to, to all sorts of, of individuals who have the, who have the appetite. Uh, next slide, please. And then again, I, I perhaps harp on about it, but the supply chain, a very important part about part of any onshore wind farm is the supply chain. Um, and whilst Vattenfall will, will lead on the initiative, we need the supply chain to really deliver the project. And as you can see, there are there are a long list of um, supply chain opportunities and roles that you can undertake and, and be part of the, the onshore wind process. So there's just a, a YouTube link that, that people might want to, to watch on, on our supply chain stuff um, when the, the slides are circulated. And I think it's my last slide next. You may be glad to hear. One from last, I apologize. Um, so this is just a, a link really to, to some of the stuff I've talked about, some of the opportunities for student starters and, and young talent and graduates. Um, and you can go on the Battenfall website and find out a bit more about those. And then last slide, definitely last slide. It's just a thank you. And then there's just two more, um, two more links there that you, that you may find of interest as a sort of follow-up to, to what I've talked about today. So thank you very much for your time. Um, thank you. So that was great. Um, now I uh, feel quite disappointed that I'm not going to be going into any kind of uh, traineeship opportunities <laughs> because looking at everything that is on offer, and I know this is that and Van is your your company, um, but you know there are a range of uh, companies that offer very similar opportunities. But just to get that sense of getting into an organisation and being able to have a taster in lots of different areas to see what might suit you is an amazing opportunity. And I'm pleased that you um, shared the slides at the end. Um, maybe we can put that up on the. Um, those links up uh, either in the chat or in the Q&A um, because uh, I've been looking at uh, Vattenfall's Twitter feed and it's available on there as well because it's um, World Youth Skills Day. So it's a good job that we're talking about all of this. Um, so thank you, that has just appeared magically in the chat. So we have got some uh, questions from uh, our attendees, uh, Daniel. So you should be able to see those as well. A reminder to those of you who are uh, watching uh, now, you can upvote questions that have been submitted. So if somebody's got there before you, you can, uh, you can upvote their question. Um, and don't wait until the very last minute um, to put your questions in because um, it might not get asked. So now is your time. Um, the first question um, is, are there spaces for physics graduates in this company? Do you think that physics would be a good fit in Vattenfall, Daniel? Uh, absolutely, yeah. I mean, um, in a lot of the engineering um, that's done, um, physics is certainly a uh, science that, that would apply. Um, and I think if you can do a physics graduation, a physics course, you clearly have the aptitude, aptitude for learning and you're clearly an intelligent individual as well. So um, from that perspective, you'd certainly be welcomed in Vattenfall. Um, I think uh, beyond just the, the course that you've got as well, um, and I think it's a message that others have said today is perhaps to stand out. Some people need to go beyond what their the qualifications are uh, and maybe, maybe also look at uh, some extracurricular things that they can do, perhaps some volunteer work they can do within the communities around renewables, um, those sorts of things. But yeah, absolutely, there's nothing. Uh, physics physics graduation is, good, is, a, is a good start for sure. Because I think that when I've had conversations with um, developers or um, tier ones, 
uh, in the supply chain that very often qualifications are, are obviously important, but there is um, there is the opportunity to um, have a wide variety of different skills and offer those to the employer as well. And is that something that you think is as important as the qualifications, depending on the kind of job that people might be interested in going into? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think um, I think the more you can separate yourself from the pack uh, is important. Um, you know, I think, yeah, just a, a qualification on paper, I think, shows you shows that you have the ability to to understand the subject matter. And if you're going into a specific engineering role, then obviously it, it has really, really importance there. But for example, in my role as a project manager, my qualifications were in um, environmental dynamics and climate change that the master's in. So not necessarily particularly relevant to, to what I'm doing today, but uh, it shows that I had the capability to learn. Um, and then um, with project management, it's about being a generalist more than anything. So you can't always just rely on what your qualification is. I think. And we we did, um, you talked about the fact that Vattenfall signed up to the um, uh, military covenant, the Armed Forces Covenant, and um, mm. Renewable UK and Vattenfall were um, very supportive of holding a, a military um, event. And one of the uh, contributors to that was talking about the fact that, because I, I noticed somebody's asked the question about how can I make myself stand out as a potential candidate? And they'd been approached by somebody who was applying for a job who said, as part of the, uh, of the application process, could I possibly just do... Um, a five minute um, presentation about myself. So you get a, a, a full idea of who I am and what I'm about and all of that sort of thing. And because it was something completely different, and this is just interview skills really, isn't it? And a bit of confidence, he pulled that off and um, I'm really stuck in the minds of people who are interviewing. So it can be different things that you can bring as well as those ex extracurricular activities that you were talking about. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yes, I know, for example, on Vattenfall's graduate training scheme that we have <coughs> hundreds of people applying for tens of roles. So you need you need something that makes you stand out for that. Um, absolutely. And there's, and there's lots of opportunities in terms of um, networking and connecting online, particularly attending um, activities yeah. like this. Put this down. Put that you've been talking to Daniel. Put <laughs> 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 him into some of this. Uh, use it to your advantage because this does demonstrate that you're interested in the industry. And, you know, I know when I'm interviewing people, I want to know that people want to work with us and that they're interested and as excited as I am about the sector. Um, one of the other questions is um, about some of the practical um, work that, um, that Vattenfell does. So how much R&D and design does Vattenfell do? Yeah, I mean, this is this is a little bit outside of, of my remit, and I don't think there's a there's a huge amount of R and D done in in the UK. I know our Aberdeen offshore wind farm has got some um, some research and development that's quite innovative to it there. So so the project team that that's working on that project will will do quite a lot. But I know in in um, in our core markets in Sweden, there's a there's a huge uh, department of, of R&D where they're looking at all sorts of innovative technology and, and if and that's something of interest, to, of interest to you or you're interested in travel as well then I'm sure you can get in touch with, with us and we can, we, can, we can look at um, what opportunities there are there um, and who knows you could, be, you could be one of the next innovators you know somebody had to think up of floating offshore for example so, um, so why not you isn't it? And you mentioned earlier in your presentation that um, Van Fall is working on low carbon steel production. Is that something that's happening in Sweden as well? Yes, yes. I'm just going to very briefly consult my, my notes a little bit <laughs> as I scramble it's around for it's them. Just, it was um, just, a, just an interest because it's um, a part of that innovation and the next stage, I suppose, in decarbonisation. And it's good to know that Vattenfall are, are playing a role in that. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we are we are one of three partners on the, on the hybrid um uh, innovation really so there's uh, there's us as an energy producer and then there's the steel producer uh, which is called SSAB and then there's the mining um, company LKAB so lots of abbreviations there um, and effectively it's looking at how we can produce steel using hydrogen um, rather than the traditional methods um, so obviously using hydrogen that can be produced from green electricity so if you can uh, produce the hydrogen 
using renewables that's even that, you know that's even better um yeah so that's that sort of sort of level of innovation that that's being looked at and i mean in this and in this country in the uk uh hydrogen i think is really really going to take off um and i think a lot of hydrogen being produced throughout the uk because it's not a particularly regional um it doesn't need to be particularly tied down to a region you know i think um, the ability for all sorts of, of, of uh, regions to get involved in that and, and brings high skilled employment in hydrogen can be delivered across all countries in the UK. Thank you. Um, we've had another question come in about PhD graduates. Are PhD graduates attractive? Is that something that Vattenfall is looking for? And if so, how do they get in? Is it is it through a graduate scheme or uh, just straightforward application and and hoping that they shine. It's a really 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 good question. Um, I mean, I don't think when when applying for the graduate scheme there would be any distinction between a, an undergraduate and a postgraduate. Um, I mean, obviously having a PhD is an additional string to your bow um, that will really make you stand out. But what I found a lot of the time is um, sorry, I'm not sure if you hear my dog. Ugh. Um, is that uh, we work a lot with uh, subcontractors and they often bring in PhD students to, to train alongside them when they're doing their roles. So, for example, on, on Penicamoid, we had our um, we had our ecologists uh, who've done a significant amount of work on Penicamoid and they brought in undergraduates, uh, sorry, they brought in postgraduates from Swansea University locally to work alongside them to add some experience um, to what they do. So I think to answer that question a bit more directly, it, whilst applying for graduate schemes may be a, a good idea as well, perhaps it could also be useful to look at some of the, the lower tiers and see if you can work alongside them and get some experience. And is that something, uh, is there a space on the uh, Vattenfall website that lists partner organisations, do you know? Um, I don't know, to be honest, but I can find out and certainly get back to you. So when the notes are circulated, I can, I can have an answer for that one. Amazing, thank you. Um, I don't know today how uh, how helpful Daniel's being here. Uh, we really appreciate the, uh, the the support because I think sometimes it's the pathways around the sector, um, understanding how things fit together. It can seem quite confusing for people from the outside until uh, until they're actually engaged in it. Um, there's a question about non-STEM roles as well, and if there are non-STEM roles in Vattenfall and if you have any idea about a, a ratio between STEM and engineering to non-STEM, and I suppose there's some of the the corporate structure side of that that uh, that people might be interested in. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. I mean, I, I would say most roles within that are follow non-STEM. Um, so, uh, yeah, you certainly don't have to. You have to be an engineer or. Uh, have all your science qualifications necessarily to, to progress in Vattenfall. I mean, we have lots of um, seconded uh, legal, uh, sorry, seconded lawyers from various legal companies that come join Vattenfall. Um, you know, project manager doesn't necessarily need to have all those STEM qualifications. So, yeah, absolutely. I don't know the ratio exactly, but I would certainly say there's probably more non-STEM um, roles than there are STEM. And even those with those STEM qualifications, a lot of them aren't necessarily doing roles now. That require those qualifications so there's a whole plethora of options and i would, I would urge you just have a look at the uh, uh the website map for website to see what careers might suit you there excellent and there's a question about experience i tell you somebody's asked about can you get into project management roles without any experience and i think that this is a bit of a bugbear out there for people trying to get in the sector because um offshore wind is um obviously it's, it's very it's established now but um it, uh, it, it's still relatively new in energy terms. And sometimes when people apply, they, um, they are told, oh, you know, you, you can be a technician, but we're looking for somebody with two or three years experience. And I think for those who are graduating, it's that challenge of how do you get the experience if you can't get your foot in the door in the first place? Have you got any advice for our, for our participants today? Yeah, I mean, my advice would be to follow the path that I took. Uh, you know, so I, I took an entry level position in Vattenfall um, and fortunate for me, Vattenfall uh, is a company that really looks after its employees and tries to uh, enhance your skills through various learning. Um, so I actually had no project management skills at all when I joined and Vattenfall paid for me to do a Prince2 training course. 
um, which gives you the necessary skills to be able to, to, to move into project management. And that's what I did. And then I moved from a project administrator uh, to an associate project manager, and now I'm a project manager. And then there's a, there's a clear pathway then beyond that. So absolutely. Yeah, I mean, you have to be willing to, to work hard and you have to be perhaps willing to not necessarily do exactly what you want to do initially, maybe. Um, but yeah, if you, if you keep working hard, then, then it's possible, for sure. It's that thing, if, you are, if you're really interested in the industry, if it's more than just, uh, I, I need a job, it's, uh, it, it's demonstrating that you are willing to go above and beyond, I suppose, and, and put yourself into... Uh, into a good position to be taken on. We've got one uh, one more question here, and then I'm going to just ask ask for some words of wisdom from you. But um, uh, Joseph, um, who has been with us all day? Hello, Joseph. Um, I remember you from the from the first session at lunchtime. So well done. Um, that's perseverance. He should get a job. Um, he's asking, what about computer science students for placements? Is that something? And I, I mean, I'll, I would just say, I know that there is a, a huge amount of interest in terms of um, people uh, with uh, digital skills and who are able to analyze data. Um, is that uh, so computer science skills? Do you think that that's something that will be advantageous? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, one of the larger departments of Vattenfall in, in art is technology, and within there, there's the uh, the GIS team, and that you know that heavily relies on skill sets such as computer science. So they'll do all, you know a lot of the mo modelling we do in house uh, for our wind farms, um, and that keeps on that keeps on moving at, at a pace way beyond my understanding. Um, so yeah, absolutely. I think computer science is a real good bedrock for that sort of role. But there are there are lots of a lots of other things as well, uh, web, web website design and that sort of thing. So absolutely, yeah, definitely. Uh, there is just such a, a huge range of different uh, of different roles. Everything from um, from the marketing side of things and communications. And um, I know that uh, I've just seen Susan's put um, some uh, careers information into the chat there, so you can see the different. Uh, digital talent program, for example, that is on offer. So there are there are roles really for everyone in in every kind of discipline. It's just about finding where you land. And I think when you're at your kind of uh, graduate stage, it's not always a very very clear pathway. So we, I hope that this has given everybody one the answers to their questions, but two um, an idea about the scope uh, of different roles and the range of different roles that are available with a company like that and file. Um, Daniel, have you got any final uh, words of wisdom to pass along to our attendees this afternoon? Um, something that will inspire them in their future career journeys? Yeah, don't get a dog is the first one. Uh, <laughs> yeah, she's in trouble when I get off this call. Um, no, I think from my side, it's perseverance. I mean, I, I graduated in uh, 2004, uh, my undergraduate degree, and then I wasn't finding a role that I wanted to get into so I thought right what can I do to make myself more attractive to a potential employer and then in 2008 I did a master's and I really didn't land on my feet with Vattenfall until about 2012 so I had to do a lot of jobs that weren't particularly satisfying to me in the interim and I don't want to come across as all doom and gloom but there, there is often the light at the end of the tunnel and don't, don't give up on your aspirations if your aspiration is to work in the renewable sector there is a job for you um, but you, you may not get it straight away um, so just keep trying, keep knocking on people's doors. Fantastic. That is excellent. You can put yourself on mute now. <laughs> I know, I know. It always happens at the worst time. But don't worry about it. You, you coped beautifully through that distraction. So well done. Thank you. Um, I was really struck as well just by um, the, the comments in your presentation around the kind of wider corporate responsibility and social responsibility um, uh, that the Vattenfall takes in communities, recognizing that, you know, there can often be a, a range of different views about changes um, to local areas and that change in, um, you know, energy provision. So, um, you know, hopefully that gives people who've joined us today a flavor of the kind of uh, attitude and um, an ethos that the renewable sector has uh, for the communities that it works in um, and that, that that um, resonates and that people feel that they would want to be part of a, a company that has that view. Um, just as a, a final um, uh, wrap up, really, thank you all so much for attending. Thank you for your contributions and questions to, to Daniel. 
just now, but thank you for joining us throughout the day. Um, I hope that it has been useful. We are trying to open the doors to the renewable sector as wide as possible so that people can see all of the potential pathways for them as they start uh, looking for jobs and thinking about their career path as they move forward. Um, we have got uh, a feedback form. So if you go back onto the main uh, VFAIRS platform, we've got a feedback session, uh, a feedback form there to, so you can go through each of the sessions and kind of rate us, grade us, tell us where we're good, tell us what you'd like to see us do differently or better. Um, and that just helps us to improve uh, for, for next time. Um, I consider all of the participants part of our group now, part of our Futures Forum. Um, and we will uh, come to you again, hopefully, uh, to get your views, maybe get your feedback. And we'd love to uh, stay in touch about your career journey so that we can find out if we've had any kind of influence or given you a helping hand in the right direction for the renewable sector. So thank you so much. Thank you to our sponsors. Thank you to uh, the gang behind the scenes as well. Uh, we've got Jess, Vicky and Emma who are there now who have made this all run remarkably smoothly. You've been brilliant. Um, and uh, we will close the session for today. Um, and thanks again for joining us. Thank you. Thanks, Emma.